right, so this is going to be a tutorial on how to make a precision platformer in Godot, um, Godot 4. Um, the mechanics are going to be similar to um, Celeste in terms of like having a dash, the movement, um, springs, stuff like that. And it's also going to be um, pretty responsive and we're going to add like a bunch of variables so that you can um, edit how responsive you want the game to be. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Um, I already did this on stream, so I'm basically just going to be looking back at my old code um, that I worked on yesterday and then uh, explaining it um, during this video. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is create a player scene. Oh, actually, wait, let's get rid of this. I'm going to make a new scene. I'm going to create a character node. Um, and inside our character node, we're going to make a collision, collision shape 2D. And for now, I will make a square. Um, we're also just going to make this, uh, we're, we're going to keep the default size for now. Oh, actually, yeah, yeah we'll keep the default size for now, but eventually uh, we're going to want to change this, and we're going to change the sprite and add in animations and all that kind of stuff. Um, but for now, we'll just leave it like this. Um, the next thing we're going to want to do is create a bunch of new nodes for the states of the player. Um, how I'm going to go about that is by making a new scene, select other node, and we're going to just make a regular node here. Um, some of the, here, let's actually go into sticky notes. Um, here, we'll just throw it in here. So some of the movement states that we need are the idle state, the move state, um, jump state, fall state, um, I'm going to need the dash state. I, yeah, we'll work on the dash state today and the climb state as well as the slide state. So I'll make just the idle move, jump, and fall state for now. Um, and then we'll tackle these um, later on in the, in the video. So let's start out with the idle state. Make that. And we're just going to create a script. Actually, before we do that, let's make a folder. So a new folder, we'll call this scenes, inside scenes, actually I think we saved this, go into scenes, we'll create a entity, entities folder, and in entities we'll make the player folder. And this is where we'll st save all our states, so I'll save this as all caps idle, um, yeah I'll save it as all caps. Okay, and let's also make a script, call it idle.gd. Um, and on top of that, we're also gonna wanna create another script uh, that all of our um, states will extend. So let's go into file, new script. Uh, let's put it in our player folder. I'm gonna call it states, or no, state.gd. State.gd. And create. Okay. And then over here in our idle state, we'll just say um, extends state.gd. All right. Um, in order to make our life a little easier, we're just going to go back into this folder and we're going to duplicate our idle state and rename it to move. Do the same thing and duplicate it for the jump state. And one more time, we're going to duplicate it and make the um, fall state. Okay. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, we got it. Okay. So let's go into the move state really quick. Make sure we rename these appropriately. Uh, and make sure you also remove the script and then add it again, and then it'll automatically create the script with the appropriate name. Um, let's go into the jump state. Do the same thing, rename it to jump, remove the script, create it again, and then it'll automatically rename it. Um, go into the fall state, do the same exact thing. All right. Oh, and uh, let's just make sure that we make sure, uh, let's make sure that extends the correct script. So we'll just copy this over and paste it in all of these. All right. Now let's save our player scene. So we're gonna go back into our character 2D. Um, we're gonna save it as player. 
calculator. And let's make sure we rename this too. And we'll create the script. So automatically in Godot 4, they create a physics, uh, well, they put some code in the physics process for you, which is like just some basic movement, UI left, UI right, adds velocity to the player, or sets the player's velocity to de their direction times their speed. Uh, we'll keep this here for now for debugging, but eventually we're gonna create our own um, version of movement. Um, so let's also, we're gonna create a new scene really quick uh, with just a hitbox on it uh, so that we could uh, see how the player moves. So if we go into a new scene, we're gonna make a 2D scene. We'll call this we'll call this world. And in world, we'll make a collision shape. Uh, actually, let's make a static body 2D. And then in our static body 2D, we're gonna throw the collision shape in and then add a shape. Um, it's just gonna be very simple, just a block here. And inside, I'm also just gonna add a quick sprite, just so we can see it. Eventually, I, uh, by the end of this video, we'll also create a time map, but um, we'll, we'll do that later. All right, let me throw this in here. All right, so all I did was I created a static body 2D, put a collision shape inside, made it a rectangle, and then I just put a sprite inside so that we could see the collision shape. Um, and I'm just going to save this um, as an environment folder and then save it as world. Okay, and what we're gonna do is throw our player into this little world. Oh, we should probably add a sprite to our player. So next thing we're gonna do, go back inside, add a sprite to D, and then we're gonna throw the Godot icon in, like that. Um, and let's just shrink. Actually, just go into transform, and we'll set the scale to what? Point one. Point two. All right, that's good enough. Um, actually, let's do 0.15. There we go. Okay, and if we go back into our world, if we run it, you'll see that the player, oh, let's also do one more thing, and that's to add a camera 2D to the player. And we'll set the zoom to two. All right, so now you can see if I press the arrow keys, we move left and right, and if we press the jump button, or if we press space, we can we can jump. Um, what do we wanna do now? Uh, now what we're gonna do is actually create the states. So right now, all, all of this is running in the player physics process. We're consist consistently always checking for input um, and setting our player direction. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add some states to the player. So let's go in here, add a child node. We're gonna add a node 2D, or not a node 2D, just a regular node. And we're gonna call it states. Inside states, this is where we're gonna put all of our new states that we've added um, as children. So we have the, uh, well we have the jump state in here we can throw. We have the idle state. We have the move state, um, and we have the fall state. Um, and this is basically uh, what our player can currently do. They can move, they can jump, they can not move at all, and they can fall. Um, so what we'll do here, um, and the, the whole point of having a, a state machine here is just so that um, Transitioning between states or transitioning between different mechanics is a lot more uh, organized, uh, especially when you start adding more and more mechanics. It just become it, it just makes your life a whole lot easier. Sometimes you don't want the player to be able to do something while they're in the idle state, or you don't want them to do something while they're in the move state, jump state, fall state, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like for example, most of the time you don't want the player to have the ability to jump while they're falling. You don't you don't want them to defy gravity unless they, unless we start to implement um, some sort of like coyote jump, um, but yeah we'll explain that later on. Um, so let's go into our move. Uh, we'll go into our states.gd. So let's go into this script right here, and we're just going to create a few functions first. So the first function we want to create is the enter state. 
function. Um, and basically, this is just code that's going to run uh, whenever we switch between states. Whenever you enter the move state from the idle state, we want to make sure that we're updating some variables. Or if you're going into the jump state from the move state, we want to add some variables. Usually, for example, in the jump state, when we enter the jump state, we want to add velocity to the player. Um, and if we are exiting the, let's say we are exiting, let's say the dash state or something, we want to make sure that the player doesn't have the ability to dash again. Um, so yeah, so we have the enter state, we're also going to have a func, and we can get rid of the ready and process, because we're not going to use any of that. Let's get a func exit state. And let's get a func um, update. We'll throw in delta. And by default, we'll be returning um, null here. So what we're going to do in our update function, this is what's going to run. Oops. This is what's going to run in all of our states. For every update uh, that's ran, we're going to be returning some sort of state. Um, and in our player function, whenever we're running in our physics process, we'll check what the update is returning. And if it returns null, nothing's going to happen. If we return a new state, we're going to create a uh, transition to state function or change state function. And we're actually going to do that right now. Um, let's see. Here for now, let's actually get rid of this. I'm going to call this default move and just throw it in its own function. For the time being, um, let's also make sure we throw delta in here. Okay, so what we're going to want in here is a func change state with some sort of input state. And for now, we'll pass this. And we're also going to want to save some, some variables. So let's go down here. I'm going to say var current state is equal to null. And var previous state is also equal to null. Um, inside our chain state, what we're going to do is we're going to say um, previous state is equal to our current state and our current state is equal to our input state. On top of this, we only want this to happen when input state is not equal to null. So let's write that. Let's say if input state does not equal null. Okay. Um, okay. Change state. Um, eventually, we're gonna also run current state uh, dot change uh, dot enter state and previous state dot exit state. We could throw it in here now, but um, it won't work just yet. So let's do prev state dot exit state and current state dot enter state. All right, and that's the entirety of the change state function. So what we're going to be doing in the physics process is we're going to grab whatever state we're in. Um, and before we do that, we're also going to create some references. Um, so what we want to do here is we're going to have a reference to our states, uh, states node. So we're going to say at on ready our states is equal and what you could do here, you could either say dollar sign states to grab this node, or you could just grab, uh, drag and drop it in here. Um, and that'll be just fine. Um, another thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to go into our jump state. Actually, no, we're going to go into our state script. And we're going to create a few references. We want a var um, state. Var states is equal to null. This is going to be a reference to its parent. Um, and we're also going to want to have a uh, variable to the, do we want a variable to the, yeah, we do. So we're going to also grab the player node. We're also going to say that is equal to null. Um, so um, yeah, each of our states is always going to have access to the player node. Um, 
And so we'll go into back into our player and in the physics process, we're going to say for state in states dot get children. We're going to say state dot states is equal to states and um, state dot player is equal to self. And that's all we need to do for now. Let me just double check with my code here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and the, wait, this should not be in the physics process. We want to put this in the ready function. Uh, so let's create a ready function and throw it in here. Yeah, you would not want to run this in the physics process. Okay. Um, what is next? Okay, so there are a few things that we need to do um, to check for input. This is how I handle uh, input, and this is because I want the, um, the game to be pretty responsive. So it gets a little intricate. Uh, or just, it might seem like I, I'm going overboard, but it will. You will see that it's important in the future to have uh, this much de detail in the player input. Um, so what we'll do here is we're going to create a little section here for player input, and we're gonna just create a few variables. One of them being the player movement input. So we'll say move movement input is equal to vector two dot zero. We're also going to have a var jump input equal to false. Um, and we're also going to have a var jump input actuation and a var climb input equal to false equal to false. Uh, we want a var, oh, let's make sure we spell this correctly, um, var dash input. I'm gonna leave it at, at that for now. Um, we might change this around uh, in the future, but this is what's been working uh, right now. So we'll leave it like this. Um, another thing we wanna do is go into our project settings go into input map and we're going to create a few buttons here uh, one of them being the jump climb and dash so let's do just capitalize it or yeah, capitalize it jump climb oops and dash okay and typically in um in platformers, people usually use um, the arrow keys and then ZXC for input. We'll have a bunch of input. Uh, for now, we'll do, for our jump button, we'll have um, the space bar as one. We'll have, um, we could do the C key. Now let's do the C key um, for jump. And then for our climb button, we'll do X. And then for our dash, we'll do Z. Oop, Z. As well for the dash, I'll just also include F uh, for debugging purposes. I typically like to use um, a controller. I don't really use a keyboard, but uh, we will include it. Um, eventually in the series, we'll also have uh, something for setting up key bindings, but um, that'll be later down the line. Um, we also need move up and move down. Um, I'll do that right now. So we'll say move up, move down, move right, and move left. Okay, and move up, we will use the W key, move down, S, move right, D, move left, A. And then also we'll include the arrow keys. So up, down, right, 
left. Okay. Now let's create a function called player input. Um, and for now, we'll check for actually in our player input function. We're also going to make sure that we're resetting the movement input um, every time. So we'll say movement input is equal to vector two dot zero. And then here we'll check for input and add values to to the uh, movement input vector. So um, we'll say if input dot is action pressed move move right we'll say movement input dot x plus equals one um, then we'll do the same thing for right except we'll say minus equals one uh, and set this to left Okay, um, if input dot is action pressed, move up, we're going to say movement input dot x, or sorry, movement input dot y minus equals one. Um, and the reason why it's negative here is because on the axis here, uh, in 2D, you move upwards negatively and downwards positively. So yeah. Uh, movement input dot y minus equals one and then the same thing but going down plus equals one alternatively you could also write uh, movement input plus equals vector two dot down um, but I find this easier um, okay the next thing we want to grab is the jump input. We'll handle all of the input, um, even though we won't handle all of the states just yet. Um, but yeah, we'll do it for now. So we'll say if input dot is oops, input dot is action uh, pressed of jump, we're going to say jump input is equal to true, else jump input is equal to false. Um, another thing uh, that I'm realizing is that we could actually throw in the if action just pressed inside of here, but I'd like to separate it. We could also make sure that instead of putting the else statements here, we could also just reset the jump input um, at the beginning here um, instead of having a bunch of else statements, um, which we could do. Um, I, I'm going to leave it like this for now. Um, I'm also just going to make it look like that. Okay. Um, another thing that we want to make sure of is to check for uh, jump if jump is just pressed, and that's going to be for our jump input actuation. Um, and you'll see why this is important later on. Uh, we'll say if input dot is action just pressed is equal to uh, jump jump input actuation is equal to true. Else, jump input actuation is equal to false. All right, um, and let's just handle the climb. Actually, let's do this. So this is for jumps. Um, let's handle our dash. Let's handle actually our climb first. I'm just gonna copy and paste this right here. Or climb, climb input, climb input, and then our dash.
All right, and that's all of our player input. What we're gonna do now is actually throw this into the physics process. So we'll say uh, player input is constantly running in the uh, physics process. We might throw this uh, somewhere else later on, but for now, let's just leave it there. Um, the next thing we want to do is run um, change state on whatever our current state is. So we'll say, um, I'll just write change state in current state dot update. So, uh, oh, and let's also throw delta in here. So what's going to happen is uh, for every frame in our physics process, we're going to be running the update function which is uh, this one right here in each of our states. So since we're gonna start out with the false state, or sorry, the idle state, let's get rid of all of this. And we're gonna say func update delta and do something in here. Basically what we're gonna do is check for input from the player. So we'll say if player dot movement input does not equal vector two, oops, two dot zero. Actually, um, why is it doing that? Should it be all caps? But actually, what we're going to do is check for the x uh, x axis input. So if player input if player dot movement input dot x does not equal zero, uh, then we're going to go into the move state. If we were to just do uh, vector two dot zero, then if the player was just pressing up or down while they were in this state, we wouldn't want them to enter the move state because it, it just wouldn't make sense. All right, so we'll say uh, return states dot move. And we actually don't have a reference to states that move yet. So let's go back into our uh, states node right here. And we're going to create a new script. And all we're going to do in this new script is gonna, we're going to grab a reference to each of these um, states here. So we'll say at on ready var. Um, let's say we're just going to create a reference to all of our states. Um, and I've already written this in the past, so I'm just going to go into our code because it is a little tedious to rewrite every time. So I'll just go in here, but it's going to be the same exact thing. Copy and paste this. So uh, yeah, we're not concerned with the dash, slide, or climb state. So we can comment this out for now. Uh, but yeah, we want the idle, the move, the jump, and the fall. And um, yeah, basically all we're doing is just grabbing a uh, reference to each of these nodes here. So uh, we're creating a variable, and then we're saying um, this variable is a reference to the idle state. Uh, this is the same thing that we did in the player node when we said on ready var states is equal to dollar sign states. So let's go back into our states, or actually, let's go back into our idle state, and we're going to say if player dot uh, input dot x does not equal zero, return states dot move. Um, next, what we're going to do is if this doesn't run, we want to make sure that nothing's happening. So we're going to say return um, null. Another thing that we could check for, oh, sure, this is lowercase. Another thing that we might want to check for is uh, if the player presses the jump button. So we'll say if player dot jump, if player dot uh, jump input is equal to um, true return states dot jump. What else would we need from the idle state? Usually you're only going to jump and move. You could theoretically enter the fall state from the um, from the idle state, um, but this is when we start introducing new mechanics. I'll put it in here now, but there's never going to be a point where that should happen. Usually you'll only enter the fall state um, from like the move state or the jump state. Let's say if player dot um, well, this can only happen if our y velocity is uh, greater than zero. 
So what we'll say is if player dot velocity dot y is greater than zero, return states dot fall. But yeah, this would only happen if let's say we were on a trap door and the trap door opened and yeah, um, that happened. Um, what is going on here? Okay. Um, so yeah, that's everything for the idle state at the moment. Um, another thing that we're going to want to do is make sure that we're updating the enter and exit state. Um, more, more so the enter state that we give the player the ability to dash again if they enter the idle state. But um, since we don't have it in our base states just yet, we'll leave it, we'll leave it as is. So let's go into the move state now. Let's get rid of all of this and we'll say funk update delta and in here um, something similar is going to happen so this is where we're actually going to create um, some of the player movement remember we created this function called the default move where is that oh right here so yeah in default move basically uh, direction is set to input dot get access of left or UI left or UI right. Uh, we're going to get rid of all of this. Let's get rid of it now. Um, and what we're going to do in our state script is we're going to have a funk player movement. Function. Um, and what's going to happen here is if player dot movement input um, dot x does not equal zero. Oh, actually, we don't really need to say this uh, because we're, we'll be, yeah, we don't have to check if it's not equal to zero. We're just going to check if it's greater than zero. If it's greater than zero, then we're gonna wanna set our player's movement to, uh, we're gonna wanna, wanna multiply the player's speed by uh, the player's input. So we'll say player dot velocity dot x is equal to movement or we don't actually have to say movement uh, input dot x we'll just say it's equal to player dot speed else um, we're going to say actually we're going to say elif If our player movement, um, if our player dot movement input dot x is less than zero, then our player velocity dot x is going to equal our negative player speed, um, and that's it. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our movement state, and in our update function, we're going to run player movement, and that's it. Um, another thing we want to do is make sure that if there isn't any input from the player that um, they are going into the idle state. Oh, and not only, uh, we don't actually want to check for input, what we want to do is check for velocity. So if velocity, if player, and it also depends if they go, uh, well it depends on um, if they're still on the ground. So you could move off a platform and enter the fall state, um, but usually that wouldn't happen. We'll, we'll, we'll write for it just in case, but usually you wouldn't, uh, yeah, this wouldn't happen. You would either go into the fall state or you'd go into the idle state. Um, but yeah, so let's go, let's do if player dot um, velocity. dot x is greater than or sorry if it's equal to zero then we're going to say return states dot idle and we're also going to include return null and we're also going to check for some more states we're also going to check if we want the player to fall so we'll say if p 
player dot velocity dot y is less than or sorry is greater than zero then return states dot fall and if player dot jump input so if this is true um, we'll return states dot jump okay for those of you who aren't familiar uh, or are new to programming you can either say you can either grab uh, what uh, the variable is so if this is true if this variable is true then we'll return this or you could also just write is equal to true um, it means the same exact thing but yeah um, return states dot jump and what are some other inputs that we might need eventually we're going to want to handle the dash and all of those states but we don't have that just yet uh, okay so uh, we have our idle and we have our move um, the next state we're gonna deal with is the jump state so let's erase all of this and we'll say if or let's actually make the um, update function so func update of delta and pass this and let's also make a func enter state this is the first time that we're actually going to be using the enter state um, in this video uh, so we'll have the enter state and we might need an exit state but uh, for now let's ignore it all right so in the jump state um, for our update function, we wanna, we're going to want to gra run gravity. We actually haven't coded for gravity yet. So um, let's, we'll do that next. Before we do that, let's actually add velocity to the player in the x-axis. This is what's actually going to push the player up. So we go into player um, and we have this jump velocity. Eventually, we also want to edit this value, but I'm going to just grab it here. And all we're going to do in the enter state is we're going to say, player dot velocity velocity dot y is equal to our jump velocity our player dot jump velocity and that's it um what is next um I'm thinking about it now and I feel like maybe we should put the jump velocity uh, variables inside the jump state rather than the way it is now um, but uh, I'll we'll, we'll update that later um, if that seems to be the case uh, because yeah I've noticed that maybe we should keep you know some important things like jump velocity uh, in the player player node although uh, we are going to be calculating our jump velocity a different way um, probably in the next video I'll explain how that's done um, but yeah we'll we'll leave it we'll leave it the way it is for now. So let's go back into our update function and what we're going to do is check for the player vo velocity and whenever it's equal to zero or whenever it's greater than zero um, is when we're going to switch to the false state. So let's say if player dot velocity dot y is greater than zero. Um, player or sorry return states dot fall and I'll also return null okay um, what other states do we need to be concerned with in the move state oh we also want to have player movement here so let's do uh, player movement I'll run that. Remember, we, we wrote this in the uh, state.gd, so we don't actually have to keep rewriting it. We just grab it right here. Um, what is next? Um, in the jump state, we can go into the fall state. We could go into the climb state too, but we haven't created those states yet. Let's just make sure that we handle these four states, and then we'll start adding the climb and slide state. Um, so let's go into the fall state. Oh, and actually, before we create the fall state, let's actually make um, the fall or the gravity function. So let's go into, I'll just do it right after our physics process. We're going to create a func gravity. And all that's going to do, we'll 
add delta as a parameter. And we'll say, if not is on flow, we're just going to copy this. And that's it. Gravity has the same name as it previously. Did we create a gravity function? Oh, um, let's call this gravity value. And we'll just get rid of this. Uh, we'll get rid of the default move too because we're not going to use it anymore. So we'll say if uh, not is on floor, velocity.y plus equals gravity value times delta. So um, what we want to do in this is basically going to run on all of our states for the most part. We'll run it in the jump state and we'll run it in the fall state. So right here, we'll say player dot gravity. And in the fall state, oh, we don't have it yet. We'll create func um, update delta will run player dot gravity. Um, and you might notice that we're we're running a function from the player notice uh, player node um, in our state. We'll we'll fix that all of that up. We'll we'll make it all consistent later on. Um, but yeah, just so you know that this this is a way to uh, run functions um, in different nodes. You just create you grab the reference and then um, run the function here. We also want to make sure that we're putting delta in here. Okay, and let's also make sure that we could switch into um, some of these states. So let's say if the player, um, if the player is on the ground, we want to make sure that they can enter the fall state, or sorry, the idle state. So we'll say if player dot is um, is on floor, return states dot idle. Another thing we could check for is if you wanted to make the game even more intricate, you could actually check if the player is on the floor and there's input from the player. Then we could return the states.move, um, but for now we'll just leave it as states.idle. And then also just make sure that you're returning null at the end. So, uh, yeah. Um, that should be just about everything. Oh, and in the fall state, we still want to give the player the ability to move. So we'll say player movement in here. So in the idle state, if there's input, we go into the move state. If we're in the move state, we have movement. Um, and if there's no velocity, we go back into the idle state. Um, if we start to fall, if our velocity, we, oh, actually, let's make sure that we run gravity on the move state as well. So we'll say player dot gravity. Okay. Um, so yeah, if gravity's running and we find that our velocity is greater than zero, then we enter the fall state. Um, and if there's jump input, we enter the jump state. When we enter the jump state, uh, we set our velocity dot y equal to our player jump velocity, which is negative 400. And then uh, we run the update function, which still adds gravity to the player, allows the player to move. And then if the player ever reaches a velocity that's greater than zero, they enter the fall state. And then when they go into the fall state, it's the same exact thing. Basically, it's the same exact thing as the jump state uh, in terms of like what you can do. There's still gravity. Oh, yeah, there's still gravity. Um, the player can still move, but if the player is on the floor, they return to the idle state. Um, one final thing that we want to do in the ready function is we're going to say current state um, is equal to states dot idle. Oh my goodness, idle. And we're also going to say previous state is equal to states dot idle. Um, another thing I'm going to do for debugging purposes is I'm going to add a label to our player. And this is just going to say the state uh, that we're currently in. 
Um, and I'll run this in the physics process. Eventually, we're going to get rid of this, but it's yeah for debugging purposes. So I'll say uh, label dot text is equal to str of our um, state of our current state dot get name. And let's run it in our world. Moment of truth, does it work? Well, the idle state doesn't have any gravity running on it, so let's do that. Oh, so this is a perfect example of, I remember when I said that usually this wouldn't happen, but if we're spawning in the player, then it most definitely will happen. So let's say um, gravity uh, player dot gravity. Oh, throw delta in here. Okay, so we're in the false state. Um, nothing is currently happening. Um, player dot gravity dot delta. Um, and player movement is on floor return states dot null. Um, let's see here. Player dot gravity is equal to gravity value. Um, player dot gravity. Let's see, make sure gravity is running. So it seems gravity is running, or our velocity is going up, but it doesn't seem like anything is happening in the uh, state here. Um, oh, and it's because we don't actually have any uh, physics running on the player yet. So let's say, we're gonna say um, move and slide. This is a function in the um, character body 2D class. So there we go. Now it should work. So now you see we fall we fall immediately, and if we move, <laughs> we crash, uh, and that's because we didn't include the delta uh, in our player gravity. Let's just make sure I put it in all of our states here, delta, delta. Okay, and run it again. Now we can move. It's the same exact thing. Uh, there is no input that uh, stops our player just yet. Uh, so let's do that really quick. So in the player movement, um, we'll say. For now, we'll have it uh, move immediate, uh, stop immediately. So else, we'll say uh, velocity dot x is equal to zero. And there we go. The very basic movement. If we press the jump button, we jump, uh, and we can still move in each of these states. Um, eventually, what we want to do is um, add movement so that the player. Um, sort of accelerates or de, uh, de accelerates uh, when they're going from the movement to the idle state. As you can see now, whenever I, uh, whenever I tap the button, we go immediately from the move state to the idle state or yeah, it's not ideal yet. And you can see when we go from the jump state to the um, yeah, from the jump, in the jump state, we can do the same exact thing. Um, another thing that we want to make sure of is uh, right now I'm holding the jump button. Um, I'm spamming the jump button. Uh, I'm just holding down the space bar and this happens automatically. Um, this is not really something that's expected in um, platformers. So yeah, we'll update that. Um, that's why we have the jump input actuation um, over here. 
So what we could do is in the idle state, instead of checking for jump input, we could say jump input actuation. Um, and same for the move state. Instead of jump input, we'll say jump input actuation. Okay. So now, yeah, now I have to tap. Every time I want to jump, I have to tap it. Um, and okay, the next thing we want to work on is it's kind of subjective on like what we need to work on now because we can either start introducing more states or we can start making this movement more precise. Um, it really, it's hard to tell which one to do. Um, I think what we will do is introduce the states. So we're going to introduce the climb state and we're going to introduce the slide state and the um, dash state and then we'll start working on um, polishing up um, all of the transitions between each of these states. So let's go back into our states here and I'm going to, let's say, let's just duplicate the fall state here. I'm going to call this dash. Um, Let's go in here, rename this to dash, remove the script, call it again, create. Um, and will it get rid of this? And make sure that it extends state.gd. Um, make the func update. Pass that and func enter state. Pass. Um, this is the first time that we're actually going to use the func exit state. So let's include that and pass. Okay, make sure we return null. All right. Um, this is when it's going to get, um, I guess, a little complicated. Uh, I guess because we're going to have all of these enter states and we're going to be dealing with velocity, um, but it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, so what we're going to do is in the enter state, we're going to check for what the player's input was. So let's go into each of our states and we'll just say if dash input, if player. And there are going to be a bunch of edge cases that um, are associated with the dash state. So. For example, in the idle state, sometimes, well, actually always, there's never going to be any input from the player in the idle state when they're dashing. So if you just, let's say you press the dash button, you're not moving at all. So we just have to basically grab the player's last direction. So we're gonna have to create a new variable for that. So let's let's actually wait on the idle state and let's go to the move state. Um, what we'll do here is we'll say if player dot movement input um, is equal is well actually no we don't actually have to worry about um or, uh, we don't actually have to worry about um their movement input we just have to check for dash input so we'll say if player input if player dot dash input is equal to true or just dot dash input we'll return um states Dot dash. Oh. Okay. Um, and we want to do this for every single state. So, not every single state, but most states. So, we'll do this in the jump state. We'll do this in the fall state. Um, and yeah, let's do it in the idle state uh, too. But what we're going to have to do is, depending on which state we're coming from, we want to make sure um, that we have the correct input. So what we're going to do here is on our enter state, uh, we're going to say we create a variable called dash direction. Set to vector two dot. 
zero. And in our enter state, we're going to grab the player's input. So uh, dash direct, we're going to set our dash direction equal to the player input. And uh, before we do that, we're also going to check what our player input is, or we're just going to check if it's not equal to zero. So if player dot movement input does not equal vector two dot zero, um, then we're going to say dash input is equal to player dot movement input. Oh, dash direction, my bad. Um, we could also just say, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it like this. Um, it's not too important. Um, otherwise, we'll say else dash is equal to our player's last direction. And we don't actually have a reference to this just yet. So we're just going to say player. For now, we'll say, yeah, player dot last direction. But we don't actually have a reference to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our state dot GD. And I'm just going to copy this. Let's actually create a variable called last direction right here. Um, so let's go into here. This is called states. And then we'll call this player movement. I'm going to throw all of this in here. I'm going to say var last direction is equal to vector 2.0. And then in our state.gd, whenever there's movement from the player, we're going to say player dot last direction is equal to vector 2 dot right. And same with the left side is equal to vector two dot left. And that is it. So dash direction is equal to whatever direction we were last pointing to. And this is mainly only uh, a problem for uh, the idle state. Um, all other states, or I guess the false state and the jump state would also have to worry about this um, if there's no input from the player. But it's not too too important. This will handle everything. Um, it's either going to run this or it's going to run this. Um, so let's go into the update. Um, another problem that we might face actually is uh, we set this to vector 2.0. We're going to set this to vector 2.right. If for whatever reason you press the dash button before you and like let's say you just enter the room or enter the game. Um, and you decide to press the dash button. If it's a vector 2.0, then you won't dash at all. And I mean, it wouldn't crash the game, but by default, we should let it work. Um, so once this is once this is done, we, we're going to want to grab the dash speed. So let's create another variable called dash speed. And we'll say this is equal to 240. And what I'll do is we'll say, on our enter state, we're going to say player dot velocity dot velocity dot x or sorry, player dot velocity is equal to our dash direction dot normalized times our dash speed. Um, the reason why we want to normalize it is because sometimes our dash direction, if it's, uh, you know, let's say we're dashing into the upright direction, our vector is 1, 1. So then we would be dashing, uh, you know, um, the hypotenuse of 1, 1, which is like a lot further uh, than if we were to normalize this value. Um, so instead of it being 1, 1, it would be like 0 0.7, 0 0.7 or something like that. Um, so, yep. 
that's that. And then in our update, what we're going to do is we're going to first create another node inside of our dash state. And this is going to be um, a timer. And in our timer, um, we're going to make it one shot. And we're also going to create a timeout um, variable, or sorry, a timeout signal. Um, in the timeout signal, all that's going to happen is we're going to have, well, we're going to create a few more variables. We're going to call, we're going to create a var dash duration. And we're actually going to make this an export value so that we can edit it later on if we need to. So we'll say export var uh, dash duration. And I like the value 0.2, but you can make it whatever you want, or you can even make it change depending on what state your previous, what, you know, what your previous state was, or, you know, whatever you want. Um, for now, we'll just set it to 0.2. Um, and we also want a reference to this timer. So let's call this dash, we'll call it dash duration. We'll say at on ready bar dash dash duration underscore timer is equal to dollar sign dash duration. Um, and what we're going to do on our enter state is also start this timer. So we're going to say dash duration timer dot start. And then as an argument inside the start function, by default, it'll just run whatever is the timer here. So it would be one second. But if we include our dash duration right here, we'll never have to worry about it. Um, so yeah, dash duration timer dot start dash duration. And then on our exit state, uh, we're going to want to say, hey, uh, stop dashing. So what we'll do here is we're also going to create another variable called dashing is equal to false. And in our enter state, dashing is equal to true. And then on our timer timeout, dashing is equal to false. Um, another thing that we're going to want to do is also set dashing equal to false on our exit state. Um, and this is because sometimes or uh, further down the line, we might want to have it so that um, we can go from the dash state to another state that isn't the false state or that isn't caused by this timer running out. And if that's the case, we want to make sure that we just reset this value. Um, it's not too important at the moment. There aren't too many edge cases that would like ruin this for us. But if, the second we start making mechanics that involve like uh, that check what state the player is in, this could you know mess everything up. So in our return state, or sorry, in our update function, what we're going to do is we're going to say if dashing is equal to false, or we can say if not dashing. Um, return states states dot fall, and that's it. Um, so whenever we're not dashing, we go into the false state, um, and immediately from the false state, let's say, well, the only thing that can happen is we go into the idle state. We'd go into the idle state. Um, another thing we want to make sure of is uh, that the player. E even though we're checking for dash input, we want to make sure that the player can dash. Uh, otherwise, they're going to dash infinitely. Um, so one like one approach would be to make sure that um, whenever we enter the idle state, um, we just update the, um, the dash state. Or we can have it so that the player runs or has a variable called can dash. I think that's what I'll probably do. That's usually what I did in the past, and it's worked. Um, there's no you know, clear cut answer for any of this, but let's see if this worked. So right now I pressed the dash input and return states dot dash didn't work. Uh, and that's because we didn't actually create the state yet. So let's go into our player and let's go into dash, throw this in here. And then in our states node here, we, if we go into the script, you see that we commented this out. Let's just throw it in, throw it back in. And there we go. So run it again, and if we press F, our velocity needs to be uh, lowercase. 
and moment of truth, you can see our dash uh, works. Well, <laughs> you can see I keep entering the dash state, uh, and that's because uh, what we probably did in our player function is we checked for uh, action pressed, but we want uh, action just pressed. So this will allow us to dash only once, but we could still dash uh, almost infinitely if we uh, just spam the dash button, which is not what we want. We want it to reset whenever the player enters uh, the idle state or the move state, basically if they enter the floor. So what we'll do is we're gonna create another variable and uh, I'll do it, I guess we could do it here or we can call this mechanics, create a variable called mechanics. And over here, I'll say var can dash by default is set to, um, we'll set it to true by default. Um, what we'll do is when the player enters the dash state, we're going to say player dot can dash is equal to true. And then, oh, can dash is equal to false. And then in the entrance of the idle state, so we're gonna make a function for that, func enter state is player dot can dash is equal to true and in the enter we'll just copy this and in our move state we'll also throw func player dot can dash is equal to true okay um let's see if this worked Another thing that we want to do is in each of these states, make sure that we can check if the player can dash. So if we'll say end player dot can dash. So let's just copy all of this, throw it in there. So we'll run our world again, dash. So I'm spamming it now, and yeah, we have to wait until I enter the um, the move state or some state, and then we can then we can do it. Um, one other thing I want to make sure of. Um, Okay, one problem here. Oh no, I think our gravity does get reset. I do want to print it out and just make sure. Um, oh, we do have our label here of, no, that's our current state. Um, let's see, gravity. If not, is on floor. I want to print gravity here. I just want to see what our final value is. Originally, we had to do this ourselves in Godot 3.5, but yeah, automatically it gets set back to zero. Okay, um, so what we want to do now is I'm gonna print out our velocity. See what it is on our world. Yeah, it's either negative 300 or 300, and if we dash upwards, it's 240. Okay, the reason why it seems so slow is because, well, one, our sprites are different sized, and our movement speed at the moment is actually faster than our dash speed. So um, I guess to make it seem like dashes matter, we'll set this speed here to 50. Um, or let's set it to, say, 70. Um, and then in our world, It'll seem a little bit more significant. Usually we kind of run slow and then dash makes us super fast or relatively fast. It only makes us fast for 0.2 seconds, but uh, the distance that we cover is what's more most important. So like in a precision platform or what would happen is like, let's say you jump across, you get a certain distance from jumping across. Our jumping distance is also way off. The numbers are um, not ideal at the moment, but we'll fix that pretty soon. Uh, you know, you jump across, and then you dash, and then you maximize your distance, or whatever you want to do. Actually, maximizing your distance might be from the diagonal dashes, um, but yeah.
All right. So what is next on the agenda? Now we could start working on the uh, climb state and the slide state. Um, what I'll do now is we'll go back into some of our states. Let's grab the, it doesn't really matter which state. We'll grab the move state, yeah, duplicate this. Um, and uh, one thing I've noticed, well, I'm not sure yet, but I usually split the two like wall states to slide and climb, but I'm thinking we could actually throw all of it into one state and basically just check for movement on, or check for input while the player is in the slide state. And if there is some sort of movement, then uh, we would manipulate their jumps that way. Um, I think, yeah, it would just make our life slightly sim sim uh, simple. Um, so I'll try it out. Um, if it works, it works. If not, we can easily fix it. So we'll do, we'll call it slide. Or maybe we should call it like wall slide or state, uh, state side wall. Yeah, I'm going to call it slide because I'm just so used to it. Um, so in our slide state, let's rename this to slide. Remove the scene or remove the script, create a new script called slide. Um, make sure that it extends state.gd and we'll remove all of this. And we'll say func update typical uh, functions here, deltra uh, pass and we'll return null. Okay, um, in the slide state, um, we're going to want to check for input from the player. So we'll say if player, so this is actually, we're gonna actually make a function called slide movement. This is uh, new from what I usually do. Uh, so bear with me, we'll say slide input, um, Sorry, not slide input, slide movement. Pass. And what we'll do here is we'll say if player uh, player dot climb input is equal to true. So if climb input, then we're going to want to grab a. We're going to want to create a climb speed. We'll say if player. Uh, dot movement input um, dot y is greater than or let's say is negative zero or is less than zero then we want the player to move up so we're going to grab we're going to create a variable here first yeah, so let's pass this we're going to say climb speed And maybe we should update this in the export. So we'll create an export var here. We'll say at export. Oh my goodness. Why does it, I don't know why Godot does, uh, Godot 4 does this where it automatically uh, quotes um, whatever is, um, whatever you're trying to type. I, I think it must be like a bug that they haven't been able to solve yet. Uh, so hopefully in the next um, release, they'll fix that. So add export var um, climb input is equal to, uh, sorry, climb speed. Set it to equal 50. And um, we'll also create another variable called um, friction. So we'll say add export var climb or uh, slide friction. And by default, I'll set this equal to 0.7. Um, okay. And what we'll do here in slide movement. So uh, what we're gonna do is if player input, we're gonna set our player movement. So player dot velocity dot y is going to equal um, our negative climb speed. And 
else? Elif, actually. Um, if our movement is greater than zero, or is less than zero, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, greater than zero, then we'll set it to our climb speed. Um, and then we're gonna also create an else statement. And this is what's going to happen if the player doesn't press anything. They'll just enter the slide state, or they'll basically be in the slide state. And what we'll do is we'll run friction here. So we'll say player dot gravity of delta. And I guess we do have to include delta in slide movement. And um, we're also going to say player dot y uh, player dot velocity dot y times equals our slide friction um, and that should be it for our slide movement so I'm just gonna run this here say slide movement dude I here let me try restarting because this happens sometimes and uh, I don't know what's actually causing it so let me just close it let's run it again Hopefully that fixed it. Let's see, there we go. Okay, yeah. Sometimes it just quotes things. Um, maybe there's just something I'm missing. Um, all right, slide movement delta. Um, another thing that we want to make sure of is we actually don't have um, anything checking for uh, for entering the slide movement, um, the slide state. So one way to go about it. Is well, one way I go about it is by adding um, raycasts. Um, the reason why I use raycasts and not the character body 2D, what you could do is you could actually use the character body and just check if it collides with the wall. Um, but I find that this isn't responsive enough uh, for a precision platformer. You want to make sure that there is a little bit of like a margin of error for the player where if they're close enough, um, they can enter the slide state. Um, that's just me. Um, maybe you can make it work with make it work with the character body 2D, but uh, with the is on wall function. But yeah, I like to do um, raycasts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a node 2D, and inside the node 2D, I'm just gonna call this, or I'm gonna rename this to raycasts, and then inside the raycasts, we're going to add a raycast node. Um, and we're going to set our target position here, let's say to eight, um, set the Y to zero, and eight is too small, let's try 12. 12 works, we'll do 13 for now. We're gonna be updating all of these values later on. Um, but yeah, so you can use just one raycast, but if you want this to be um, you know, as precise as possible, you know, the more the better, I tend to use just two. Um, and I put them on the top and the bottom. Um, it really depends. Eventually you might want to put one here or you might want to have three, like one in the middle, one on the top, and then one on the bottom. Actually, I think uh, in my main game, Memory, um, I use three raycasts and that's because I also use something called fudging in the game where if you dash into a corner, um, it moves the player around the corner so that they're, so that the, the movement seems a little bit more seamless. Um, but for now, we're just going to use two um, for the slide state. So let's do this. We'll say, we'll put this one over here. I'm going to call this um, right top. Or here, let's be consistent here. Top right. Kind of like top right. Um, so we'll do top right. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to drag it all the way down. And we're going to call this one bottom right. And then we're gonna grab both of these. We're gonna duplicate them, um, but this time, this will be top left, and this one will be bottom left. Then we want to make sure that our target position is just the negative value on the x-axis. 
negative 13. Um, and that's all we need. Um, in our player code, we're also going to grab a uh, reference to this. So let me just do nodes here. Um, and we'll just say at, oops, at on ready bar um, raycasts is equal to this node here. Okay, um, and then what we'll want to do is we're going to create another function called check for wall or get get next to wall. It's probably a better name. Get next to wall, um, and in next to wall, what we'll do um, is we're going to return if. Uh, one of our raycasts hits something. So we'll say um, if, or we'll say for raycast in raycasts dot get children. Um, what we'll do is we'll print, well, no, we won't print. We'll say if, well, actually, no, let's fir first force the raycast to update. So we'll say raycast dot Force. Um, I forgot what it's called. Let's see. Uh, recast. Force recast update. So we're going to say recast dot force recast update, and we'll also say um, if recast dot is colliding with something. We'll want it to return whatever that wall was. So um, if, and we actually don't really need to, we don't really need to be concerned with the collision point or anything like that. We're just going to say raycast, um, we'll say if raycast dot, um, was it cast to or target position? Raycast dot target position dot x is greater than zero. If it's greater than zero, then we're going to return uh, vector two dot right. Else, we're going to return vector two dot left. Um, so whichever one we hit first, it, well, it's first going to check for the uh, top right and bottom right, and then it'll check the top left and then bottom left. Whichever one it hits, uh, it'll return uh, either left or right. Um, and then at this point, if it re does return something, if it returns uh, vector two dot left or vector two dot right, then we're gonna, uh, you know, change into the slide state. Um, otherwise. It's going to return null, and if it returns null, then uh, nothing will happen. Um, so what we'll want to do is we're going to check for these values when we're in the jump and the fall state, because that's the only states that really uh, we would be worried about. Technically, we could also have it uh, happen in the slide state, or I'm sorry, in the dash state, but um, for now, it's fine. Another thing that we want to make sure of is we're going to want these uh, raycasts not to collide with the player. So we're gonna grab all of these raycasts right here and make it set to collision mask two and then erase one. So it's gonna ignore one and then what we want it to what we wanna do um, in our world is uh, for our collisions here. Um, I don't plan on making a time map today. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate each of these static bodies and we're going to rotate them. So I'll rotate this one here. I'll rotate this one like that. And these will be the walls that we uh, collide with. Just do something like that. Okay, so in our jump state, what we're gonna wanna do is we'll say if player Uh, get next to wall 
does not equal vector to dot zero, or we can say does not equal null. Do we return null or did we return vector two? I forgot. We return null. Um, we could do vector two dot zero. Uh, we'll we'll do null. Um, so yeah, in our jump state, if player dot get next to wall is equal to null, then um, it's not equal to null. Then we're going to return states dot um, slide. Same with the false state. Um, and in our slide state, we have the slide movement and let's just see if this works. There might be a bug here. Um, we didn't actually mess with the collision or we didn't mess with the hitboxes here. So let's make sure our collision is on two and one. So it collides both with the player and the ray casts. Um, run it again. Okay, so return state slot slide. Uh, the slide state doesn't exist yet. So let's go back into our player. Let's go into our states and let's introduce the slide state. So yeah, we might not actually have the climb state. This is something that I've used for a very long time, but I just realized it's not actually necessary. Um, so, yep, we'll run it and nothing just yet. Um, let's see. The issue was that I forgot to add it to the R states here. So let's go into the slide state and throw the slide in here. And um, yeah, originally, let's just look at our code again. Um, yeah, if we're colliding and if our target position is greater than, uh, on the x-axis is greater than zero, we return vector to that right. Now, if we run it, we enter the slide state. Um, and we're going to be stuck in the slide state for now because we don't have anything that checks uh, otherwise. So what we're going to do now, and this is when it gets kind of complicated, uh, there's a bunch of edge cases that are going to manipulate how we exit um, this state. So depending on if there's climb input, we're going to be jumping from the quote unquote uh, climb state or we could be jumping from the slide state technically, or we can um, enter the jump state by just going all the way up and reaching the end of the wall, or we could enter the fall state from just falling off the wall after sliding for a long period of time, or we could just exit the fall state from just moving to the left. So there are a bunch of different edge cases and then uh, there are different um, transition uh, variables that we would have to manipulate. So uh, for now, we'll just handle uh, if there's any collision, if, the, if we lose any collision at all, um, if it's ever equal to null, we're going to want to set it to enter the false state. So we'll say if player dot is action, oh, sorry. <laughs> if player dot, um, what did we call it again? get next to wall, if I can spell get next to wall, um, is equal to null. If it's equal to null, we're going to want to return states.fall. Okay. Um, if the player enters the jump state, um, we're going to want to return, or yeah, if the player enters uh, jump input, so if player dot jump input actuation is equal to true, then we're going to return states dot jump. Um, but again, there needs to be some variables that we're manipulating here because this is not. Uh, Entering the jump state is not the only thing that is important. We need to make sure, uh, we need to check what side of the wall the player is on. Um, if they are, um, if they're pr pressing the uh, like right input or if they're pressing left input uh, and relative to which wall they're jumping from. So there's a lot that goes on in this. I'm not sure if we're gonna, uh, we're gonna grab all of it today, but we'll leave it there for now. Um, 
what other states do we want to make sure of? We also want to make sure if the player enters the fall state, or, I'm sorry, if they hit the ground. So if player dot is on floor is equal to true, then we're going to return states dot idle. And we want to make sure that we're returning null here. Um, another thing that we want to do is that if they are in the slide state, we want to give them the ability to move on the x-axis. So we will say uh, player dot or not player, but player movement will be ran um, in this function as well. Um, and gravity is the same. And if it's not next to wall, we enter the fall. If jump input, we enter the jump. And what I did in the past, what we'll do right now actually is, um, if you're in the jump state, you won't enter the 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 slide state. It's only when you're in the fall state. So let's get rid of this. Um, that way, we won't have any like conflictions when the player presses the jump input. When they press jump input um, from the slide state they can jump wherever they want without being forced back into the slide state and without having their friction get manipulated. Um, so let's see if this worked. So we're in the slide state. We can still move out of the slide state into the fall state. If we jump, we can jump off the slide state. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's kind of hard to actually press the jump button. Um, when exiting the slide state, and that's because uh, we don't have uh, coyote jumps yet. So what happens here is we, we're we jumping, or what I'm trying to do is I'm sliding on this wall, and then I press right input, and then I try to jump. But what usually happens, if I don't press the jump button before I press the right, uh, right button, um, I'm forced into the fall state, and by the time I enter the fall state, I'm not able to jump anymore. And that's because typically you don't want to allow the player to jump uh, when there's nothing uh, below them. Um, but what we do want to have is something called coyote jump. And this is um, this is something that allows the player or the game to feel more responsive when you give them the ability to jump even if they uh, typically missed their jump. Uh, and what I mean by that is let's say the player is on this wall right here or on this corner right here they fall off the platform. As they're falling off, they press the jump button. They should still have the ability to jump up um, and either get you know get to the next platformer, uh, next platform, or maybe just jump back up. And similar with the walls here, um, let's say they want to jump from this wall, or let's say they want to jump from this wall to this wall. Um, you even if they sl uh, if they fall off the wall, you still want to give them the ability to do a jump or a wall jump across from this side to this side, uh, even if they pressed it a little too soon or a little too late. Um, so what we'll do in our fall state, and this is what I meant when it, it gets a little bit more uh, tricky, um, because now we have to communicate between, or uh, yeah, kind of communicate between each of these states uh, appropriately. Um, so what we're going to do is in our fall state, we're gonna create an enter state function and in this enter state we're going to create a well first let's create a timer and we're going to call it coyote time coyote time coyote time um, let's create a reference to this so on ready bar uh, coyote Call it coyote timer. And I like to leave this coyote timer as 0.2 seconds, but as usual, we will make a uh, reference to um, an export value to manipulate it. So export bar uh, coyote, coyote duration is equal to um, 0.2 seconds. And then in our enter state, we're going to say 
well first let's make sure we set this here and we'll say um coyote timer whoops coyote timer dot start on our coyote duration um, another thing that we want to make sure of is that we give the player the ability to jump here. So what we'll say is we'll create another var variable called can jump and set this to by by default we could set it to true. It doesn't really matter. Um, and we want to check what our previous state was. So you can only enter the jump state from pre uh, from certain states. Um, that being the idle state, the actually the idle state might be a little weird. Um, she might not want to allow the player to do that, but we'll include it for now. We'll say if our previous state is equal to states dot idle. I'm just gonna copy this because we're gonna need a bunch of these. Or states dot move or states dot slide if it's any one of these states the idle state the move state or the slide state we're going to say can jump is equal to true else can jump is equal to false. And we're only going to start the timer if it's here. Um, and whoops, we also want to make sure that it's for the player previous state. So player dot previous state. Um, player dot previous state and player dot previous state. Um, okay. So we start this timer. And then what we're going to want to do now is in the false state, we can say if uh, player dot jump input actuation is equal to true and um, can jump is equal to true, or we'll just say and can jump return states dot jump okay um, usually what people say or what people do from what I've noticed is they also reset um, the player velocity when they enter the jump but that's only if you want to allow double jumps in your game um, this game does not have double jumps uh, so we won't be concerned with it, but if you wanted to include double jumps into your game, um, what you would want to do when you enter the jump state is just make sure that you actually, it doesn't matter here. Um, well, eventually we might, let me think about this because I'm setting our player velocity equal to our jump velocity. So it wouldn't actually matter. Uh, we are resetting it. Um, I guess this is more for people um, who are adding like acceleration to their jumps and they have double jumps if you do that then you'll want to make sure that you're resetting the uh, the y value here so just setting it to zero before you add velocity um, but yeah it doesn't matter here um, and it won't matter if, if you were to add double jumps to this game um, it would work perfectly fine um, and maybe we'll make a tutorial on how to add double jumps maybe we'll make this more modular where you know we can um, you know, add a jump counter to see how many jumps they want. Um, so yeah, let's see. Um, so we should have coyote jumps now. Um, if I did everything correctly, coyote timer dot start, um, and can jump is, oh, we want to make sure that we add a signal here. So let's go into our timeout and so all I did was I went into our coyote timer, I went into node signals, created a timeout signal, um, added the signal function, and then what we're gonna do here is just say can jump is equal to false. Um, and if it's equal to false, then we can't enter the jump state. 
Um, so you have a 0.2 second leeway um, to see if it works. And let's run it. So I'm gonna, it might be hard to see, but it does work. So I'm gonna enter the false state and then you can see that I'm able to jump a little later. And what I can do to make sure that this is actually working is we're gonna set this coyote time duration to like, let's say just let's go crazy and set it to one second. So now, let's say I'm all the way here. I'm able to jump while I'm like super late, um, which is not what you would ever want, but we know it works now. So I'm gonna set it to 0.2 because I think that's a good value. Um, and it only works when we're in the idle state, in the move state, or in the slide state. Usually, actually, it, it would almost never happen in, in the idle state unless um, you've actually, I might even remove it from the idle state because it, it doesn't really make sense for it to happen in the idle state. Um, and I think if we have it in the idle state, um, for the one time that's a, that it's applicable is if there's a like a trap door that makes you fall. But by the time you're falling, the 0.2 seconds I think is maybe too late. Maybe what we could do is mess with the values here. So if if our previous state was the idle state, maybe we'd want to set the coyote duration to maybe uh, 0.1 seconds uh, because 0.2 seconds might, might be too much. So like maybe for the move state, it's 0.2 seconds. And then for the wall jumps, uh, for the jumps on the wall, we'll set it to 0.1 seconds. Um, I won't mess with it today, but just know that that is a possibility if you want to make your game more responsive or just, you, you know, you want to tackle um, different edge cases uh, that make your game more satisfying to play. Um, so let's see what else we've got here. I think we got everything for the most part. We got our walls. Um, we, let me see. We didn't add the, uh, oops. Yeah, we have climb input. We didn't actually work on the climb input yet. Um, so, and it crashed actually. So one thing we need to make sure of is we capitalize this. Let's make sure this is lowercase. And I forgot we're not using the climb state anymore. So it should be a lot easier. Um, so yeah, you can see I'm in the climb state actually. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a little weird. I'm so used to uh, the climb input. What we want to do here is if climb input, we also want to make sure uh, that if there isn't any input that we're setting our velocity to zero. So let's run it again. And there we go. And from this state, we can still jump. You know, you could still jump from the left, the right. Um, the slide state does lock us in though. So I mean, uh, the climb state does lock us in. So you can't move on the X, uh, on the X axis. Um, Unless you press the jump button. But yeah. Okay. Um, because this video is already getting way too long, I think I'm going to cut it short here. And then we'll start updating. We'll, we'll polish all of these states um, in the next video. Um, but one thing I do want to show... Um, is that in some games, how how um, climbs, I'm not sure if I'm going to do it in this game, um, but how we handle movement for the climb state or how, how we handle jumps in the slide state is uh, we check if there's climb input. If there's climb input, we want to make sure that if the player is pressing the, let's say they're pressing the right arrow key, if they're pressing and they're on the right wall, if they're on the right wall and they're pressing the right arrow key and they're in the climb state, they jump towards the right. Um, but if they're not in the climb state and they're holding the right arrow key, then they would jump towards the left. They would jump in the opposite direction. So if I'm holding the climb and I'm trying to jump towards the right, I would jump towards the right. If I'm not holding the climb and I'm jumping towards the right, I would actually jump towards the left. And this makes wall jumps a lot more satisfying if we have two walls next to each other. Oh. Let's say we have two walls next to each other. If you're just holding the right arrow key and you're trying to jump across, uh, if you're not holding the climb button, you would jump like this. Like you would jump, jump like a zigzag. Whereas if you were just holding the climb button, you would just jump on the same wall over and over again. Um, it's a subtle difference, and a lot of people don't understand the mechanic. Um, like it's not intuitive for most players, but if you teach this early on, um, it allows for like 
really uh, nice levels or like really nice level design for the players. Um, but yeah, um, I will leave it at that for today. Um, stay tuned for the next episode.